This is the Catholic Daily Journal for Tuesday, May the 28th, 2019. It's the feast of St. Bernard of Menton, whose Alpine monastery and its famous dogs have saved numerous lives thanks to the tankards of brandy they wear around their necks. St. Bernard lived in the southwestern Alps in the 11th century. As a young man, he saw that folks in the mountains had never really embraced the faith and had continued many pagan practices. And he resolved as a young man to consecrate himself to the Lord and to spend his life trying to convert those mountain folks. To that end, he studied and traveled broadly in the foothills preaching. And as he was able, he built hospices and religious houses to care for the poor. And when the time was right, he built a monastery in the mountains themselves. And it was in that monastery that the large dogs of the region were trained and crossbred to be huge, woolly St. Bernards, like the ones we have today. St. Bernard died in 1081 and is the patron of all mountain sports, including backpacking, skiing, snowboarding. Yes, the Catholic Church is a patron of snowboarding and other mountain sports of that sort. He's also one of the only saints to be named patron of a mountain range. I have no idea what that means, but if I were going to the Alps, you can bet I'd say a little novena in his honor. Today is the sorta kinda feast day of Lanfranc. It's sorta kinda because Lanfranc isn't a saint, but his name appears in the martyrology. He may be a beatus, a blessed, but it's just not very clear. Like St. Bernard, he lived in the 11th century in the northern part of Italy, but Lanfranc was no missionary. He was an archbishop and a famously brilliant theologian and lawyer. He may have been born in Italy, but life kept pushing him west. He studied in Italy and then became a teacher in what is now Switzerland, and then he taught in France. He became the abbot of a monastery in Beck, and then he was elected as Archbishop of Canterbury in 1070. Lanfranc was called upon frequently to advise major figures in the church and to explain complex theological and legal ideas. He was the first to use the thinking of Aristotle to explain Eucharistic transubstantiation. He died today in 1089 and was venerated as a holy man, but for some reason he was never formally canonized. His story is worth reading more about, though. Today is the birthday of two fascinating authors who uniquely embodied their regional identity. In 1908, Ian Fleming was born in the super-rich Mayfair district of London. He went to war and served in naval intelligence. And when he came home, he wrote a long series of books revolving around the impossibly suave, skillful, and worldly spy 007 a.k.a. James Bond. While the movies were where Bond shined, the books were beloved of the Brits, and they brought to the world the British sense of suave and of debonair in a way that no series really had before. A few years later, in 1916, American novelist Walker Percy was born in Birmingham, Alabama. He was close to historian Shelby Foote and Mississippi author William Faulkner. Percy married and lived with his family in rural Louisiana and wrote in the Southern Gothic style. His most famous work is The Moviegoer, in which he describes the uniquely Southern and, in fact, uniquely South Louisianian notion of the malaise, that kind of lethargy that comes from being hot and sweaty and not wanting to move and not wanting to think. It evokes so much the scenes in Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. Percy was born Protestant but became Catholic after his marriage and was closely connected to the Benedictine Monastery near his home in Covington. He's buried there today. This quotation from Percy's book Lost in the Cosmos tends to sum up his thinking. Quote, you live in a deranged age, more deranged than usual, But despite great scientific and technological advances, man has not the faintest idea of who he is or what he is doing. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work.